Hello, welcome to Grafana LGTM stack course. My name is Mohamed and I'm very happy for being here. Uh, in this section, I'm going to talk about Grafana Tempo, one of the components of Grafana LGTM. Uh, and it helps you to have a higher level of observability. And actually, this is a tracing monitoring solution. Okay, so it's very important. But before talking about Grafana Tempo itself, I'm going to show you a picture uh, which helps you to understand some different concepts, okay? So here, we have two important concepts, a trace as well as a span. But what is trace? Trace actually represents the whole journey of a request as it passes through a set of services and a set of nodes. If you look at this picture, we have a user who makes a request to an application and actually, this, this is a distributed system, includes multiple services. And the request of the user, first of all, goes to API Gateway and then goes to service A, service B, and database. And then, and then finally, the result uh, returns to the user. It's important to know that how our application responds to that request, how long each step takes to complete where our requests are initiated and finished. So to answer to these questions, we need traces. Once the user makes a request, a trace, and actually a trace ID is, it, is generated to evaluate the latencies and the duration of each step, as well as how our application responds, uh, as well as evaluating the total number of requests to each uh, service and to each uh, component here. And it's very, very important to have a higher level of observability. And whenever your system goes to an error state, uh, traces helps you to find the root cause of the error. A trace actually includes one span or more than one span. In this example, we have four different spans, API Gateway, Service A, Service B, and Database. Uh, a span actually is a unit of work, has an operation name, and it has many different key value per attributes. And the most important thing that a span uh, has a start time as well as a duration. For example, if you look at this green line related to API Gateway, it represents the duration and the latency of this specific span. Okay, so it's important. Okay, let's go to the documentation of Grafana Tempo. Grafana Tempo actually is a tracing backend solution. It means that first of all, you need to instrument and you need to integrate your application with uh, one of tracing protocols such as Jaeger, Zipkin, or OpenTelemetry. And then you can send the traces of your, of your application to Grafana Tempo. And finally, you can integrate Grafana with Grafana Tempo to visualize your traces. And also, you are able to generate metrics from spans. It's important to generate metrics from spans. Uh, for example, you want to find out the latencies and the duration of a specific span, the total number of calls to a specific span. So to have these metrics, we need to generate metrics from spans. And Tempo can do that. And also, one of the most important features of Grafana Tempo is uh, linking and integrating Tempo itself with logs and metrics. For example, if you want to have the logs related to a specific span, or if you want to have the metrics related to a specific span, we can integrate uh, our tracing data with logs and metrics. We can integrate Tempo with Loki and Mimir or Prometheus, for example. Okay? So in this course, I'm going to cover these features. So, we'll, so don't worry about it, OK? If you look at this picture, this is an example. This is a distributed system with multiple endpoints and targets, such as slash account, slash card, login, health, and so on. And uh, here we have overall error rate of these endpoints, as well as a table here which shows you the latency of these endpoints. And this information helps you to find out how your application is working. 
and how your application responds to the user, to the request. And wherever your application goes to an error state, you can find the root cause of the error using this information. Okay. Uh, monitoring is not just about metrics or logs or profiles or traces. The highly recommended way is using all these components inside your monitoring uh, stack, inside your monitoring solution. Okay. And each of these components has a specific responsibility. For example, metrics helps you to find out that, hey, something wrong is happening. Metrics is just a value, a number, and it notifies you through alerts and alert manager. And you will find out that, hey, something wrong is happening, but I don't know what is happening. To dive deeper into the problem, you can use, for example, Loki as a logging um, monitoring solution to check the logs of your application to find out that what is the problem? What is happening actually? The answer to this question, you need to use logging monitoring, okay? To check the logs of your application. If you are going to use a distributed system, if you have a microservice-based application, so your application includes different services, different components. It's important to know that where it's happening. So now I know that what is the problem? I know what is happening but I don't know where is it happening, okay? So to answer to this question, we need to use traces. Traces helps you to find out how our, how our application responds to the request, where your requests are initiated and finished, and also how long each step takes to complete. And it's so important to know that traces helps you to have a higher level observability, and it's very, very useful to find out what is the problem with Loki and then to find out where it's happening using traces, okay? So it's recommended to use all these components. And profiles here helps you how your application uses um, the CPU and memory resources to improve the performance of, of your application using optimizing uh, the functions and the lines of your code, for example. So it's helpful to have all these components. This is uh, the tempo architecture here. Okay, tempo architecture. Let's dive deeper into the architecture of tempo. We have many different tracing protocols here. And a distributor is the first component of Grafana tempo, which receives traces and spans in multiple formats, including Jaeger, OpenTelemetry, and ZipKit. And then it routes those traces to Ingester. Ingester batches traces into blocks, create indexes, and then flushes it all to the backend storage. For example, StreetBucket, GCS, and Azure. In this course, I'm going to use Minayo to store our blocks. And also we have metrics generator. This is an optional component of Grafana Tempo. This is disabled by default. You need to enable it. You need to configure it. And in this course, I'm going to show you how it works. We're going to work with metrics generator in this course to generate metrics from spans. And then we need to send and push these metrics to a metrics backend. And our metrics backend in this course is Grafana Mimir. Okay. And also we have Grafana here. If you are going to find a trace based on its trace ID, you need to do that through Grafana dashboard UI, for example. Your request goes to query front end, first of all. And then we have querier here that is responsible for finding the trace ID in either the ingester or uh, in the storage backend. Okay. And also we have compactor, which is responsible to compact blocks within storage backend. Okay. Um, one of the most important thing that you need to know is that first of all, you need to define that 
what is what which tracing protocol you are using for your application for example in this course i'm going to configure and provide a simple flask application to create uh, traces and spans for my application using open telemetry as a tracing protocol okay you may want to use Jaeger or Zipkin or any other tracing protocols for, a, for your application, but in this course, I'm going to use Open Telemetry to create traces and spans for my simple Flask application. Because of that, we need to enable Grafana Tempo to ingest Open Telemetry traces. It is disabled by default. Okay. We are going to install Tempo using Kubernetes Helm chart. So if you look at the default values related to Grafana Tempo Helm chart, we have many different key value pairs here. But one of the most important sections here is traces block here. Okay. This block includes different tracing protocols such as Jaeger, Zipkin, OpenTelemetry, and other tracing protocols here. As I said earlier, I'm going to use and I'm going to integrate OpenTelemetry with my Python Flask application. It means that um, the traces and the spans are going to be created by OpenTelemetry. Because of that, I need to integrate OpenTelemetry with my Tempo instance. But as you can see here, Jaeger gRPC is disabled by default zipkin is not enabled here as well open telemetry http and grpc traces both of them are disabled by default so we need to enable tempo to ingest open telemetry http traces and grpc traces because of that we need to enable both http and grpc traces of open telemetry because my application is going to use open telemetry as a tracing protocol. If you are using Zipkin or Jaeger or any other open tracing protocols, you need to enable them here instead of open telemetry. This is based on your application, okay? So it's very, very important to know. So let's go to the terminal here. There is a file here called tempo-values.yml. And I'm using this file to modify some default values of Grafana Tempo Helm chart. The first section I modified is storage. In this section, you can integrate your backend storage with Grafana Tempo. And I'm using a pre-ready uh, instance of Minayo, so I need to integrate Minayo with Grafana Tempo. Therefore, I provided the secret key as well as the access key of Minayo here. I created a bucket already within my Minayo instance called tempo-traces and Grafana Tempo needs to connect to this bucket to store blocks, okay? The endpoint of Minayo as well as insecure equals to true. So when I go to the browser and I type minayo-local, you can see that there is a bucket here called tempo-traces and Grafana Tempo uh, wants to connect to this bucket to store blocks, okay? The second section is Minayo enabled equals to false. The default behavior of Grafana Tempo Helm chart is deploying a new instance of Minayo for you to store uh, blocks, okay? But as I explained earlier, I'm going to use my own Minayo instance. I don't need any new, any new instance of Minayo. Therefore, I decided to disable this section because I don't want Grafana Tempo to deploy a new instance of Minayo for me. Okay, so I disable it here. But if you don't have any pre-ready instance of Minayo, you can leave it as it is and the its default value is enabled equals to true, but I disable it here. The most important section is traces. As I explained earlier in this course, I'm going to uh, instrument my simple Flask application with open telemetry. Okay? Therefore, I need to receive uh, the span and trace from open telemetry. So, 
I need to enable gRPC and HTTP section of open telemetry here. Both of them are disabled by default, but we need to enable them because my application is going to be instrumented by open telemetry. If your application is going to be instrumented by Zipkin or Jaeger or any other tracing protocols, you can enable them here. But in this course, I'm going to use open telemetry. So I enabled both of them, HTTP as well as gRPC here, related to open telemetry. Okay, so if I type kubectl get pod n tempo, you can see that I deployed Grafana tempo within my Kubernetes cluster already, so I don't need to deploy it once again. But uh, if, you, if you don't have tempo within your cluster, you can deploy it within a template like this if you want. Integrating your backend storage with Grafana tempo as well as enabling tempo to ingest traces, for example, of OpenTelemetry or Zipkin or Yeager or any other tracing protocols, okay? You can enable tempo to ingest, for example, OpenTelemetry, gRPC traces, as well as HTTP traces here. If you go, if you check, as actually, uh, the official documentation of Grafana Tempo, it has a section called um, Get Us Started and Example Setups. You have different options to set up Grafana Tempo within your environment, such as using Docker Compose or Helm. And if you click on deploy on Kubernetes using Helm, uh, it gives you a documentation to show you how to deploy Temple within your cluster. For example, you can create a separate namespace adding Grafana uh, Helm repository as well as installing Grafana Temple within your Kubernetes cluster, okay? So we did that already, and now Grafana Tempo is now up and running within our Kubernetes cluster, and I'm going to use it. Let's go back to the documentation of Tempo. I want to show you something. Yeah, here. If you want to provide monitoring uh, for tracing, you need a tracing pipeline, okay? It's so important. You need a tracing pipeline, and this pipeline includes four different components. The first component is client instrumentation. It means that first of all, you need to add instrumentation points to your application to create and offload spans. Okay, this is the first section. In this course, I'm gonna show you how it works. We are going to add instrumentation points to our Python Flask application, and we're going to do that through open telemetry tracing protocol. So you will learn how to work with it. Okay. The second step is using a collector. A collector such as Grafana Alloy, open telemetry collector, Jaeger agent, and any other collector you want to use. But in this course, I'm going to focus on Grafana components. Therefore, I prefer to use Grafana Alloy as the collector. So the traces from the application will be sent to Grafana Alloy as the collector. And Grafana Alloy is going to forward all those traces to Tempo as a backend. Okay? So the collector is in the middle of this pipeline, receiving traces from the application and forwarding those traces to Tempo, to a backend such as Tempo. And finally, we need to visualize our traces. So to do that, we can add the data source of Grafana Tempo within Grafana, okay? And we can integrate Grafana with Grafana Tempo. In this course, I'm going to cover all these steps. First of all, uh, we are going to instrument our Python Flask application using OpenTelemetry Tracing Protocol and you will learn how to work with it. And then I'm going to configure Grafana Alloy to receive traces and forwarding them to Tempo. And finally, I am going to add Tempo data source within Grafana. And also I'm going to generate metrics from spans 
And I think this section is, can be very, very interesting as well as helpful and useful for you. Okay. So first of all, let's start with client instrumentation. I go to the documentation of open telemetry instrumentation here. There is an important line here. Please pay attention. Using open telemetry, you can instrument your code in two primary ways. Code-based solution and zero-code solution. Actually, we have two different options to instrument our application. Manual instrumentation and auto-instrumentation. In manual instrumentation or code-based solution, you need to import the modules, the libraries of open telemetry inside your code. This is the first step. You need to define tracing provider. You need to create spans inside your application. You can add span attributes uh, to the current span if you want. You can add span events if you want. And also, you need to define an exporter where you want to send your traces to. So you need to handle all these things within your code. Creating spans, adding span attributes, adding span events, um, defining an exporter to send the traces, and defining a tracing provider, importing modules and libraries, okay? But for auto-instrumentation, you don't need to modify the code of your application. And open telemetry uh, will instrument your application automatically. Okay. And uh, the third option is using both of them simultaneously. Okay. You can use both of them if you want. So let's go to uh, the source code of our application here. But before that, I go back to the documentation of Open Telemetry. I want to show you something. I click on zero code here. Zero code means auto instrumentation. Okay. It says that automatic instrumentation is available for the following languages. And the language I'm using is Python. Okay. First of all, you need to install these appropriate packages within your environment, as I did already. And if I scroll down here, auto instrumentation example, I click on it. There are two important examples here, manual instrumentation and auto instrumentation. In manual instrumentation, you can see that we have a route, we have a specific route called server underline request. And for this specific route, it creates a span called server underline requests. And then it adds um, span attributes to the current span, okay? So in manual instrumentation, you need to create span. You can also create um, span attributes, span events, and so on. But if you look at this section related to auto-instrumentation for server request route, you can see that there is no need to modify our code. There is no uh, line of code related to creating span, related to adding span attributes and so on. And this line of code and this application, for example, is going to be instrumented by open telemetry automatically. Okay, very good. The third option is, as I said earlier, is using both of them simultaneously. Okay. So let's go back to the terminal. There is a file here called app.py. In this file, I'm going to use both manual and auto instrumentation. Okay. For manual instrumentation, as I explained earlier, I need to follow multiple steps, such as importing the libraries and the modules related to open telemetry or specifying the tracing provider. These are the steps related to manual instrumentation, okay? If I go down here, we have multiple routes in this application. For example, slash, slash home, slash shop, slash block. First of all, if you look at the route of slash home, you can see that I created a span for this route. 
and the name of this pen here is manual underline span and also i added a set of uh, additional span attributes to the current span such as http target method environment okay so i'm using manual instrumentation for this specific route but if you look at slash or slash shop or a slash block these endpoints and these routes are going to be instrumented by open telemetry automatically because as you can see here for a slash shop slash blog and for a slash there is no lines of code related to creating a span there is no lines of code related to for example adding uh, a span attribute adding a span event because open telemetry is going to instrument these routes automatically so in this file, I'm going to use both auto and manual instrumentation. And the, another thing that we have in this file is generate underlying metadata. This is a function that I defined here, and its name is generate underlying metadata that is responsible to generate metadata for us. And this metadata includes trace ID, Spare ID, HTTP target, as well as HTTP method. And these routes are using that meta, that function. For example, slash is using generate underlying metadata function. A slash home is using this function as well, slash shop and slash block. But these routes are going to add an additional metadata. For example, they are going to add uh, a key value per to this metadata. For example, for a slash, it's going to add a key value per, and the key is message. The value is welcome to open telemetry instrumented app. When you, whenever you make a request to slash, it returns uh, a set of metadata information such as trace ID, span ID, HTTP target, HTTP method as well as a message. And the message for a slash will be welcome to open telemetry instrumented app. For a slash home is this is manually instrumented, for example. For a slash shop is welcome to our online shopping. And for slash blog is welcome find latest news here. So whenever you make a request to these routes, they return uh, a set of metadata as well as a message based on that route. Okay, very good. I saved the file. So now let's run our application. To run with auto instrumentation, I use this command here. We pass the method we use uh, to run the script. Open telemetry dash instrument, and then we need to we need to define an exporter here. Uh, the exporter and the agent will be a collector, for example, in a real environment. But for now, in this case, I'm just going to show you how the application is working, okay? Because of that, the exporter here will be console. So whenever you make a request to this application, um, the result, the generated spans, will be returned within your console, okay? So I run the application and this application is listening on this URL. So I open a new terminal and I make a request to HTTP localhost. And for example, I'm gonna make a request to slash shop. It returns a metadata for me. HTTP method, HTTP target, a span ID as well as a trace ID, and the message that we added as a key value per to the metadata. Welcome to our online shopping. Let's go back to the first terminal. Yeah. Uh, we have a generated span here. The name of the span is a slash shop. This span has been created by Open Telemetry. Once you, once you make a request to your application, a trace ID is generated, okay? 
we have a span ID here as well. This span has no parent. Because of that, the parent ID here is null. This is a root span. As you probably know, spans have a parent-child relationship, okay? But this is a root span. It has no parents here. As I said earlier, each span has a start time as well as an end time, a duration, and a latency, okay? And OpenTelemetry added these attributes to this span. This span has no events. And these are resource attributes related to slash shop span. So this is span created by OpenTelemetry. This is about auto instrumentation that we create that we explained. Okay. So uh, okay, let's make a request. In this time, I make a request to slash home instead of a slash shop. If you remember, we created a manual span or a slash home. Okay, so I make a request and it returns a message and the message is this is manually instrumented. HTTP target is slash home. Let's go back here. I scroll down here. Okay, yeah, we have a new span in my console called manual on the live span. This is the span that we created manually, okay? Dirt trace ID as well as span ID, but the most important thing that this span has a parent span, okay? And the attributes that we created for our span are available here. HTTP target, HTTP method, and environment development. We created a span and also we added a set of attributes to the current span. Okay. But as I said earlier, this span, I mean manual span has a parent and this is the parent ID 3B. So let's scroll down here. Yeah. This pad ID is 3B here. This is the parent of manual span that we created. And this span has been created by OpenTelemetry automatically. Okay. So for slash home, we have two parent. We have two spans. The manual span that we created manually and the automatic span that created by OpenTelemetry automatically. Okay. So the span that uh, created by OpenTelemetry is the parent of the span that we created manually. So for a slash home, there are two different spans. One of them is created by me and another one is created by open telemetry. Okay. And when I go here and when I type slash blog, yeah, the message is welcome. Find latest news here. I scroll down here. The name of this span is slash blog and it has no parents because um, we just have single span for this route. And this span has been created by OpenTelemetry for slash blog. Okay. So very good. It was about um, auto instrumentation, manual instrumentation, how to instrument your application and we'll learn how to do that, okay? Very good. If you are going to host your application within a, within a Kubernetes cluster and auto-instrument your application in a real environment, you have to follow multiple steps. The first step is creating a Docker image for your application, okay? That I did that already, okay? So in this directory, I have a file called Docker file, which is responsible to create the Docker image of my application. And I built the Docker image already. So if I type Docker images, type it to grep trace dash demo, you can see that there is a Docker image called trace dash demo v4, which is going to be used 
uh, for deploying my application inside our Kubernetes cluster. Okay. And also, I have two important manifests and files in this directory. The first one is deployment.yaml. I open it. Uh, the name is trace-app. The name of space is trace-demo. I'm going to talk about this annotation in a few minutes, so don't worry about it. But the most important thing is the image that I built already. Trace-demo v4. This image is going to be used uh, by this deployment. Okay? And also, we have another manifest here, service.yaml. And it has a selector app equals to trace-app. And it points to this workload, actually. Okay? So, we are going to deploy our application that I explained earlier within our Kubernetes cluster. Okay? To auto instrument this application, which is living inside Kubernetes cluster, we need to deploy and install open telemetry inside our cluster as well. We need to install its operator. Okay. So to do that, I go to the browser and I type open telemetry operator. This is the official uh, GitHub repository of Open Telemetry Operator. If you scroll down and check its README, the first step is installing uh, the Open Telemetry Operator within your cluster. But before that, make sure you have Search Manager installed and run within your cluster. Okay? So if I type kubectl get pod n search manager, you can see that the Search Manager is up and running within my Kubernetes cluster. So before deploying and installing OpenTelemetry operator, you need to install Search Manager within your cluster as I did that. Okay? And then try to install OpenTelemetry operator using this command. So when I type kubectl get ns, you can see that this command, first of all, creates a namespace called Open telemetry operator system for you. And then it tries to deploy open telemetry resources within this namespace. So when I type kubectl get pod n open telemetry operator system, we have a resource inside this namespace. Okay? So first of all, let's try to install and deploy Search Manager. And then deploy and install Open Telemetry Operator within your cluster as I did that already. Okay? This operator has two important resources and CRDs. You should be familiar with them. The first resource and the first CRD is instrumentation. Kind equals to instrumentation. To use auto instrumentation, you need to configure an instrumentation resource, okay? This resource has an important section called exporter endpoint. And this endpoint can be, for example, the URL of Grafana Temple, when you want to send traces directly to Grafana Temple, or it can be the URL of your collector. I prefer to use collector in the middle of my tracing pipeline. The connector receives traces from OpenTelemetry instrumentation and forwards those traces to Grafana Temple. Okay? We have multiple sections here, called, such as Python env, .NET env, and Go env. These environment variables are valid for OpenTelemetry. And these environment variables will be injected into the pod of our application. Okay? So if the programming language of your application is Python, you can use this section here. So please select and choose one of these sections based on the programming language you're using. Okay? So I go back to the terminal. In this directory, I have a file called instruments.yaml. 
which is going to be used for auto instrumentation of my application. Okay. Its name is demo dash instrumentation. Its name is space is trace dash demo. And it, uh, it has uh, an endpoint here. In the next section, in the next episode, I'm going to work with Grafana Alloy. I'm going to configure Grafana Alloy to receive traces from our instrumentation here and for what's those traces to tempo, okay? So please don't miss the next section. Don't, don't miss the next episode. It's very, very important. So whenever we configure our Grafana Alloy, and then I will replace this URL with the exact URL of Grafana Alloy within our Kubernetes cluster, okay? And also we are using Python N section here because the programming language of my application is Python. And I'm using two different environment variables, traces protocol and metrics protocol. These are valid environment variables for open telemetry. And these environment variables will be injected into the pods of our application. In the next section, I'm going to show you how it works, and I'm going to show you these variables inside the pod of our application. Okay, please don't miss the next episode. Okay. If you remember, I talked about an important annotation here. This is the deployment of our application, and it has an it has a very important annotation instrumentation.opentelemetry.io slash inject dash python equals to true. Okay. First of all, you need to apply your instrumentation within your cluster. And then you need to add this annotation to your to the deployment to the workload of your application to inject uh, auto instrumentation. Okay. So to use auto instrumentation for your application, you need to add this annotation to the pod template of your workload. But before that, please apply your instrumentation within your cluster. So when I scroll down here, based on your programming language, you can select one of them. Inject as Java, Node.js, and Python. We are using Python, so I used this annotation within my pod template. Uh, the possible values for the annotations are true that I used here. True. It means that, uh, let's imagine that we have uh, a single instrumentation resource in the same namespace because uh, both of them are at the same namespace. The namespace of my instrumentation is trace-demo. The namespace is deployment is trace-demo as well. And I just have a single instrumentation with my cluster. So I don't need to point to the name of the instrument instrumentation. I just use true. It means inject an instrumentation resource from the namespace, from the same namespace, okay? Because when I type instrument.yaml, you can see that its namespace is trace-demo. Both of them are using the same namespace. Or you can use the name of the instrumentation you want to use. It means that instead of true, you can use the name of the instrument instrumentation you want to use. And if your instrumentation is living on another namespace, you can use uh, a format, a pattern, something like this. The namespace as well as the name of the instrumentation. And the value of false means, means that please don't inject. Okay? I'm using a single instrumentation within the same namespace, so the valid equals the valid value here is uh, true. Okay, so we have uh, an instrumentation here to configure to use to configure auto instrumentation for applications and to inject instrumentations inside my application. We have to use this annotation here. If I scroll down, 
we have another example here. Let's imagine that we have a deployment, we have a workload, which includes uh, multiple containers, and each container has a separate application, for example. Okay. In this example, you can see that we have uh, three different containers. My app, my app two, my app three. Let's imagine that you want to auto instrument uh, your first application as well as the second application only. Because of that, you can use this annotation. Open telemetry.io containers name. My app and my app two. Okay. And it means that uh, my app and my app two containers will be instrumented, but my app three will not. Okay. If you have multiple uh, containers inside a single deployment and each container has a separate application, you can uh, select which uh, containers needs to be instrumented using this annotation here. Okay. Very good. Um, in the next section, I'm going to work with Grafana Alloy. I'm going to configure Alloy to set to receive traces, sends them to Grafana Tempo, and also we are going to visualize our traces uh, using Tempo data source. And also, I'm going to generate metrics from spans and integrating Tempo with Luki and Grafana Mimir. So um, it's enough for, the, for this section. Please don't miss the next section. It's very important. I hope you like it and I see you soon.